friends, and welcome to another video. This week, we're going to be taking on yet another questionable fashion item, thigh-high Uggs. Yes, that's right, your middle school self's favorite winter shoes have gone sexual. Well, maybe not sexual, but they've definitely grown up. Now, I was first made aware of these Uggs back in January of this year, when designer brand Y Project sent them down the runway during Paris Fashion Week. Yes, that is the same Y Project of four-foot long-sleeve denim jacket fame. And with one glance at these boots, as always, the internet had feelings. Bizarre thigh-high Ugg boots divide the internet. This Y Project Ugg collab will trigger you. Yes, folks, they're real and they're horrifying. But regardless of whatever feelings people have about this mid-2000s fever dream, here are the facts. They are very tall, they seem very warm, although I guess that's not a fact, nope. and they are much more expensive than their shrunken ancestors, which aren't all that cheap to begin with. But because I'm predictable, I bought them, and now they're here. Tyler, I actually might need your help. I don't think I can just like pick it up off camera. This box is enormous. Part of the drought. Oh, all right. So this large package is my Uggs. I am pretty impressed by the size of the box, and I was also even more impressed by the size of like the shipping box that these came in. We had recently ordered a sofa, and we thought it could possibly be a sofa. It's a little sticky. Oh, there we go. All right, so I'm going to open up the tissue paper. Oh! So here is a thigh-high Ugg that is probably literally the size of a third grader. Oh my God, it can stand up on its, oh no, it can't. I mean, besides like the intimidating height, it does look mostly like a normal Ugg. It's definitely more like wrinkly up here, but down here, it's got the sort of signature flat Ugg shape. They did have a heeled thigh-high Ugg version, but I felt like looking at that one, it was missing some of the classic essence of Ugg. All right, and there's boot number two. You can't see me anymore because the Ugg is blocking my entire being. <laughs> this is where I live now, in a cave made of Uggs. It's like an Ugg TV. This is like Eeyore's house. I'm like a little bit speechless just from the sheer height of these things. But based on the title of this video, I think I'm gonna have to wear them. So let's try them on, shall we? All right, so standing next to them, they are definitely thigh high. I would even call them like crotch height, you know, pube height, if okay, you will. Pube, pube high Uggs. All right, do you wanna take a look inside? Yeah. All right, so there's your classic Ugg interior. Except it just descends into nothingness. It's a portal to Hades or to Australia. We're taking you inside the Ugg here, guys. Hello. This is like a colonoscopy. That is the you from Australia. <laughs> All right, so without further ado, let's put my feet in here. Oh, oh my God. Okay, I'm in, my, fo my foot's in. I think that the top could go a little higher, but I think that it has reached a point where my thigh is too thick for like the leg opening. It looks like one of those videos where you see like a python eat a deer. <laughs> yeah. All right. They're on, I guess. I mean, they're incredibly cozy. I feel like from this level of my leg down, I'm just in a giant blanket, which is awesome. And actually inside right now, I'm not too hot, but I'm worried about my mobility as it is a little bit hard to walk around because the Uggs hit each other. But I guess that's something we're gonna have to figure out this week, along with temperature control and general styling. You know what? You look like you're wearing like goalie pads for hockey. You're like Goldberg, that's why he ducks. <laughs> quack, quack. Quack, quack. Either that or I look like Dustin, like trying to capture D'Artagnan the demodog. You know, I'm like, <laughs> You ate my cat! So for day one of our Ugg venture, I wanted to style the Uggs like Y Project had styled them for their runway show. So I have this sort of like oversized white long sleeve turtleneck t-shirt. Were those all the words I needed to say? And I added a couple of safety pins to simulate the sort of like wrinkle or blouse effect that Y Project has on their garment. I also went for some floofy hoop earrings as well as a nudie makeup look. So since I was going for a recreation of how Y Project themselves styled the Uggs. I'm not sure if it's up to me to say whether or not this outfit works. I'm trying to be avant-garde high fashion. Is this fashion? But if I were to guess what Y Project is going for with this look, I would say it's a wrinkled and comfy vibe. The specific designer who sort of like came up with the idea for this collab really seemed to harp on like the softness of the Ugg. So I feel like in general, it's supposed to be like 
I'm soft. There is some harmony with like the scrunches of the Uggs and like the single scrunch of the shirt. And I do think that that is like reflective of Y Project's like general aesthetic. They seem to love like wrinkly, scrunched, draped, oversized things. You are like a human couch potato. Yes, potato vibes, but fashion potato. So as for actually wearing these boots out into the world for the first time, I had a few thoughts. First off, I found them quite toasty. Okay, in the shade, it's not so bad, but in the sun, I'm like a sweat ball. Oh, I'm warm. I'm warm. Everyone, I'm warm. I also found them kind of tough to move in because as you walk, the material of each boot rubs against each other. I'm like wading through peanut butter, but it's just like ugh. Which sort of does raise the question for me, how did people walk down a runway gracefully in these? Because I tried to come up with like a runway walk in these shoes and it wasn't very good. Hey, Tyra always says you wanna have a signature walk. That's a signature walk. This is it. I call it the compass. I will say though that when wearing these boots without pants, they don't get stuck on your thighs as much. They're definitely more slouchy without leg wear to give them some traction. And with the extra room, I was actually able to turn the tops inside out, which is how the girl I was copying wore hers. But then you can see my tag. I bet you I could trim the tag, but I'm nervous to bring scissors near these. Yeah, that's probably not a good idea. Maybe I'll try and trim them off once we've uploaded the video. So for day two, I wanted to look to a celebrity who has actually worn the thigh-high Uggs for my outfit inspiration. So I went for a loose recreation of Rihanna's thigh-high Ugg outfit, and her general aesthetic was Ugg, a lot of gold jewelry, and a sort of like brown-toned scarf tied around her body. Though she did have like the pointed toed and heeled thigh-high Uggs, I felt like the color scheme and general proportions were the same, so I feel like the look was somewhat transferable. So to capture her look, I went for for a copper-toned velvet dress from Fashion Nova. I'm a Nova babe, everyone. I am a Nova babe. Which obviously isn't quite as bold as just wearing some strategic fabric. I'm not sure I'm ready for the scarf. YouTube definitely isn't. That's true. Ad distributors are not ready for the scarf. No. But it did have a little drapery in a similar location to some of her scarf's ties, creating sort of a comparable tan and bunchy effect. I will say it is sort of like a sexy Sharpe look. <laughs> from, you know? from High School Musical? No, like the Wrinkle Dogs. Oh, got it. <laughs> Overall, I think I get what she's going for by trying to match her top to the boots. I kind of feel like a tin man. Or I guess more like a bronze man. But even though I had attempted to go for a more wearable version of her outfit, I still had some difficulties as my Fashion Nova dress Fashion nova and kept riding up as I walked. <laughs> Literally, I'm flashing everyone. <laughs> Why is this happening? It's just a very personal video. This is your truth. So maybe I should have just worn the scarf. I am not sure if this was a successful styling, but I think I gave a few people in their cars a nice view. So for our third Ugg day, I wanted to finally take my fate into my own hands and try and style these Uggs for myself. So I have sort of like a loose black turtleneck sweater dress, as well as some exciting earrings. Ooh. Take the shots from far away because my sideburns are out and about. My thought process when choosing this outfit was that I have to find something short enough to like show off the Uggs in their entirety, but I also want something autumnal to like go with like the coziness of the Uggs. I haven't worn a sweater in a while. We're coming up with sweater weather. Yeah, you gotta say sweater weather. Sweater weather. In general, I thought this outfit moderately worked. My turtleneck sweater dress was kind of giving me cafe vibes, like perhaps I should have included a beret or a baguette. I just need like a little bongo or something, you know, like spoken word drum, and I'll go like, but even without the imaginary beret, I feel like the fall elements throughout complemented each other. But as I was warming up to these boots, figuratively and literally, oh no, it is not sweater weather. I figured I was in need of a sanity check just to see what everyone else thought. So we posted a photo of this outfit to Instagram where you guys are brutally honest. So after a few days, our pic racked up about 10,000 comments, some of which were positive. Oh my God, you look like Link from Legend of Zelda. I stan. More of which were negative. Hmm. I hate these. And a few which I didn't understand. You look like Tana Mojo if she was a Canadian fourth grader. What? 
In general, I would say you guys came up with some pretty good comparative imagery. Ariana Grande, but make it winter. Bagged lunch, but make it fashion. Looks like kebab to me. But I think the overall consensus was, after looking at them for a second, you did not like them. Now, I'm not sure I'd be quite so hard on them looks-wise, but I have been spending a lot of time with them, so I may be developing a soft spot. Speaking of softness, though, one thing I started to notice by day three was how flaccid they were becoming with repeated wears, as they started to sag a lot as I walked around and required near-constant maintenance. I just want to make sure they look as tall as possible for the picture, because if they're just knee-high Uggs, then are they really that bad? And I was also starting to see more creases in the toe from like the motion of my foot as I walked. <laughs> And though I feel like it's pretty common knowledge that Uggs get worn in over time, I guess just thinking about the price of these, one would hope that they would be a little hardier. Just smoothing, don't worry. But at the end of the day, they're not. There's just more Ugg. So for day four, I wanted to throw it back a little bit to the dawn of the Ugg era with a mid-2000s inspired outfit. It's like, this is me 10 years later, these are the Uggs 10 years later. Yeah. Remember Uggs? This is what they look like now. Feel old yet? So for this outfit, I went for a denim mini skirt to really hone in on that iconic weather confused look, which is essentially normal LA clothes, but also Uggs. As well as a white layering tank top and a pink juice couture velour hoodie. The other really key part of the outfit is that my hair gets stuck in my lip gloss. That's a must. And then you also have to eat a little bit of lip gloss. Yeah. Though my memory of Uggs begins in the 2000s, which is from what I can tell, really when they became fashionable among the youths, Uggs actually have a somewhat lengthy history. My knees are hot. I think now I owe 15 cents to Paris Hilton. Yeah. Before the pink, juicy, mini-skirted era of the Ugg heyday, before their mainstream breakthrough as one of Oprah's favorite things in 2000, and before they were featured on the feet of the US Winter Olympic team in 1994, Uggs were a surfing shoe. In the 1960s, Ugg boots were popular with Australian surfers, who wore them for warmth after hitting some chilly waves, brah. And yes, they were called Uggs long before the brand Ugg came around. One Australian manufacturer claims that he named his boots Uggs in 1958, after his wife commented that the first pair he made were ugly. While some argue that the name comes from the Fug boots worn by the Royal Air Force during World War I, which coincidentally was short for flying ugly. Now what really surprises me about Uggs is their past as a surfing boot, given their propensity for staining and wear and tear. Though I guess their beachy origins make wearing them with a miniskirt more reasonable. What doesn't surprise me is that people have always had hang-ups over the way Uggs look, as even at their peak in the 2000s, they were mocked pretty mercilessly. I refuse to have elephant feet. Elephant feet. So I guess the question is, why would Y Project, who are ostensibly fashionable, want to make thigh-high versions of these bad boys? Well, I guess one possible reason is the coziness. The saving grace of the Ugg has always been the comfort, so I guess why not just have more of it, as their designer implied? But I'm not sure that's the whole story. I think the more likely scenario, given all these headlines, is that they're trying to be subversive. Now, thigh-high boots have been considered sexy and fashion-forward women's wear since the 1960s, in cahoots with the rise of the miniskirt. So mash up a boot that is definitely sexy with a boot that is arguably ugly might just be juxtaposy enough to be provocative. Something to note is that Y Project isn't the only trendy brand to collab with Ugg even in the last year, so perhaps they're all looking for a bit of their own shock and Ugg. But even if these collabs are a bit tongue-in-cheeky, at the end of the day, I think the joke is on the Ugg haters, as Ugg seems to be content trading in some roasting for continuing relevance, which is more than you can say for a lot of other 2000s trends. Now, in regards to my historical outfit, I didn't really mind it all that much. I think because it was an homage to a nostalgic and familiar look. It's less avant-garde because you're like, yeah, I remember that. I mean, I don't remember these, but I remember <laughs> something like these. Yeah. And even though I never owned my own Uggs as a youngin, this look took me back to a different time. I feel like you put those Uggs on with this outfit and you're a teenager. That's how I I feel. I'm just slightly less hormonal. 
and I've got a bit of a bigger butt. But besides that, very teenaged. <laughs> so for the last three days of our UGG week, Tyler and I happen to be traveling to Philadelphia to visit Tyler's family. And I am taking my Uggs with me so they can experience some colder weather. Now, one unexpected obstacle was the question of how to get them to Philadelphia. Now, I was all ready to like stick my little things back in my Uggs and pack them up, but they are larger than our suitcase. And though I could have like folded them in half, I was concerned based on the fact that they had already started to crease in other places, that they would just get like a big crease down the middle. You know what this means, right? I think I'm gonna have to wear them on the plane. This was not my finest decision. Now we didn't leave our house late for our flight, but there was a lot of traffic at the airport itself. So we ended up having to park and run. And yes, I was sprinting in my thigh high Uggs. I'm filming ya, I'm running, so it's hard. So my plan to keep them safe by wearing them was completely out the window before we even got on the plane. Did we make it? I don't know yet. <laughs> We'll see. <laughs> now, after running through the airport, we did eventually make our flight, which was good, but it also meant that my legs were very sweaty and also trapped inside an UGG in an airplane. It's almost like a little snuggy. We are on a red eye, so. Oh yeah, did we mention? We're on a red eye. Now, in an attempt to sleep, I took my Uggs off, but even so, they took up a lot of valuable leg space, so it was a very uncomfortable flight. Tyler, I can't fathom putting these back on again. <laughs> I've been clutching them between my thighs in my sleep for hours. And needless to say, I probably should have just packed them. So for day five, our first day in Philly, I wanted to go for sort of like a winter casual outfit. Sort of like an outfit you might actually wear with Uggs, but the Uggs are just really big. So my usual winter casual would uh, of course be all black, but I tried to like mix up the shades in this outfit just so my whole outfit didn't look like a block of black and a block of tan. Variety is the spice of life. Exactly. So during this day, we took the Uggs to see some classic Philadelphia sites. We went to the art museum, which is also home to the Rocky steps, like the steps that he runs up in while he's training. So do I just run up the steps? You're gonna sweat a lot, but yeah, you can like jog up and then like, you know. And then at the top I'm like. You like celebrate, yeah. Okay, all right. Which was definitely a challenge to recreate with the Uggs on. You're carrying a lot of dead weight here. That's how you train, right? Yeah. You need some drag. These are almost like those ankle weights. Yeah, similar. But worse. All right, now what do I do? Turn around? Yeah, you just kind of put your arms up. I tried this a few times. Make it a little more vertical. Like him? Yeah. As it seemed like a popular activity. After that, I realized that the museum's marquee exhibit was called Fabulous Fashion. If that's not fashion, nothing is. So it was almost as if they had anticipated my arrival. Have you gotten some good pans down from the sign? Oh, yeah. To the fabulous Uggs? After watching this video, they should replace that sign with your Uggs. Yeah, absolutely. I don't know who that is. Get her out of there. <laughs> Get out. So to continue our tour of Philadelphia, we headed over to Independence Hall to harass the birthplace of our nation with thigh high Uggs. I just wonder if the founding fathers knew it would come to this. I feel like maybe John Hancock would have liked him. <laughs> he seemed to like oversized things. I also think my favorite founding father, Ben Franklin would have liked them. You know, they're innovative, new, invention-y. And they cost lots of Benjamins. Eh? Eh? Okay. Finally, to conclude our Philadelphia day, we visited Wawa. Which is a convenience store, but funner, basically. Now, while in Wawa, I found an unintended use for the saggage of my Uggs. Snack hiding. You mean for carrying, not hiding. Right, carrying. Storage. Now, I don't advocate shoplifting, but you can definitely sneak some stuff in there. If I put these in there, I'm gonna have to buy them, yeah. so I'm deciding if I want these or not. <laughs> you can put this one in there. That's the one you like? Yeah, go with that. All right. I think probably the most legal use for this would be to like sneak a bunch of snacks into a movie theater. Also, yes, I did buy these, so don't worry, Philadelphia PD. So for our penultimate UGG outfit, I let the UGG inside me run wild, and I ended up in a head-to-toe UGG-themed ensemble. I see your thigh-high Uggs, and I raise you person-high Uggs. <laughs> hey, why project? 
What's good? One thing that's interesting to note is that I was able to actually like get all of these other items in store right now, which I'm not sure is indicative of the popularity of Uggs, but rather the popularity of Fuzz. Also, we are at Valley Forge Park outside of Philadelphia, and I'm just letting everyone know where we are in case you hear some revolutionary drums in the background. The drums weren't intentional, but they were present. Anyway, back to the outfit. I do think that like part of the point of these Uggs is that they're trying to simulate like the Ugg growing and like taking over your leg. So I thought, why not go one step further and let the fuzzy fungus consume my body in its entirety? The fuzz rises the fuzz rises. In addition to matching the Uggs, as well as the fall foliage, I also coincidentally matched Tyler's sister's dog, Taz. So because of that, we borrowed him for the day as an additional extension of the outfit. Unfortunately for him, because I mean, I guess he's getting a walk, but you know, now he has to hang out with me. He has to associate with the Uggs. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Taz. Yeah, as he looks he's, ashamed. He's looking away. <laughs> now, I guess we'll never know if he liked the outfit or not. He's just going. Uggs be damned. He's going. But he didn't try and chew on me. So maybe I wasn't super convincing as a human boot. I think he's running away from the Uggs. It's like the opposite of the carrot on a stick. It's like the carrot you don't want just right behind you. <laughs> yeah. like slowly advancing. Yeah. So to wrap up our week wearing thigh-high Uggs, I decided to go for another assortment of our so-called ugly items. What am I doing here? What terror hath you unleashed onto Pennsylvania? So to pair with my Uggs, I brought out the Y Project four foot long sleeve denim jacket, as well as my ASOS band ruffle tee and my never before seen hairy leggings. Dear thigh-high Uggs, you started on Dua Lipa and Rihanna, and now you're here. Look, we call that the reverse Drake. <laughs> I think that the Y Project jacket was a definite must, seeing as it is also from Y Project, and it also features some scrunching elements. You know, the wrinkles make the outfit more consistent. <laughs> I agree. I thought this outfit was gonna be terrible, and it's still not great, but I feel like the wrinkles are helping it be more cohesive. Now, the hairy leggings aren't necessarily my favorite so-called ugly pair of pants. It's actually probably the stretching that's most upsetting, because it's giving it sort of like a greenish hue. Yeah. As some of you guys may know, we do have a few pairs of ugly pants, including our clear knee mom jeans, completely clear jeans, eight foot long jeans, and also like a couple of other assorted pants. But it's hard to find things that will fit inside the Uggs. And I thought if I put anything plastic in there, it would either fog up or not fit. So hairy leggings it was. Now, though I wouldn't say this was our best ugly outfit, it was sort of a fun experience wearing some unusual clothing items outside of LA. I don't know how well people are taking to it. I think they're very confused. I've gotten a few stares. Um, I'm not sure which item is garnering the stares, but I don't think people are loving it. But I think it was kind of nice for the ugly items to sightsee a little bit. Travel, become more worldly, and scandalize some new eyes. All right, I feel like we should probably head home before I'm banned from Pennsylvania forever. Yeah, what are we gonna do for Christmas? I don't know. Just stay home and, and eat some dinner with our hairy leggings. Okay, so that was my week of wearing thigh-high Uggs. As for the style of these guys, I would honestly say I don't think they're that bad, especially in some more wintry weather where their imposing coziness seems more justified. However, what I did think was kind of disappointing was how quickly they started to wear down. Creasing in the foot, scuffing in the toe, wearing down of the material where my thighs rub together, the whole shebang. As a result, I spent a lot of my time wearing these shoes, avoiding stepping in anything suspicious. I feel like leaves make me stressed. Me too. Yeah. I'm like, there could be hidden goose poop in there. And also avoiding knocking into anything at all. <laughs> I don't want to hit the boots. <laughs> now, I know that Ugg sells cleaning kits specifically to clean your Uggs, but when you compare the size of these things to normal Uggs, I would guess it would probably take five times the cleanser and probably five times the time to clean and dry them. And that's not even addressing all the little nooks and crannies you would have to get into. So while I personally think that $1,300 is an extremely high price point for any boot pretty much ever. I think that if I were to spend that amount of money seriously on a pair of shoes, I would want them to be the ride or die, last forever, bury me in these kind of boots. I know that might not be how fashion works, 
but it's what I want. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked that video, make sure to shamash that like button. And if you wanna see more videos like this, make sure to shamash that subscribe button. Here are my social media handles and a big shout out to Kimberly for watching. Thanks for watching Kimberly, and I will see you guys a next time.